Leagues of Votan Law, Origins of the Kin. We talk, my partner and I. Our hearth is strong, our bond unbreakable. Yet we do the dance, we know the steps. We know nothing will change, but we do it anyway. It makes things easier. She sallies at me. Why go? They will never be like us. They are different to us, she says. Yes, but it is believed they are our distant cousins. We have shared DNA, shared history. Perhaps a shared future. She retorts. They wave candles at computers, mutter chants at gears and pulleys. Whatever common ancestor you say we may have had is distant indeed. How can you trust those who live the way they do? <laughs> I retort. Where has trust ever come into trade, let alone battle? We know they are changeable, inconsistent, ignorant and bitter. We are aware. You overestimate these barbarians, she says. Humans. Pah! They breed by chance, luck, and they look like every coupling was the worst possible genetic outcome possible. I respond, yes, they have their frail and weak of mind or body, and we do not. We are forged, but perhaps we have cheated ourselves. She plays the game. What? She says. Puffing up. Oh, don't play that card. You know I play anvil to your hammer. As I have said before. Yes. Yes, they have their negatives in their choice of reproduction. Yet, with every negative outcome, as you put it, there is the other extreme. There is beauty, talent, ability that we no longer can throw up. They have a saying. A one in a billion man or woman. She cuts me off as usual, which is pathetic unto itself, she says. Even if they have the extremes of bad and good, as you say, then their baseline from which these extremes come, it is far lower than our average. And their culture retards any that would have had the potential for greatness. I respond as usual. I, I know, and I believe, of course I do. And, not but, and, I still think there is merit within them, potential. A sally I have not heard before now comes from her mouth. I do not want you to throw away your life on a people who will only regret your passing at their own hands in some distant time when they have progressed again. What if they are not moving forward at all, but backwards, declining? Everything we know of them states this is true. And perhaps they do not. All I know for certain is that the tear across the galaxy, the stars, has changed everything. Outside, in far space, she says. No. Here too, you must concede that. She replies, Their messes come to haunt us, I. We fight their corrupt marines. We give them aid by standing firm and destroying their enemies here in the core, reducing the threat they face. We aid them without even their knowledge. And still, I say, I am sworn to my word, and my word is given and not refused. The prospect leaves tomorrow, as do I. You never were able to finish this argument, she says. I just did. By running away? No. By heeding your counsel, but doing as must be done. Your warning in my ears. I now go, but I will be safer for it. But you have done all you can. Now I must do all I can. And I will go. And you will maintain our name in the hold until I return. 
Can you do that for me? She looks down and then looks up. Yes, I will. Always. And when I return, I shall bring you a pearl the worth of a planet. She looks me deep in the eye. Fight well, endure. Bring honor to our name. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the factions, forces, and faces of the Warhammer 40k setting, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. Don't forget, we have a natural history and mythology channels now. Links in the description. So go have a shifty. Now, let us proceed. And today, we shall be delving into the genesis and history of the kin of the Leagues of Votan. Now, do bear with me, as even after the lore, there is much I wish to tell you. So stick around, I guarantee, your eyebrows will at least flutter, and you will not regret the stay. And so, as usual, let us lean on the new existing wisdom. From the first codex for the Leagues of Votan. To quote, Origins and Adaptions It is possible that the ancestor cores retain records of all kin history since their earliest days. If such information survives, however, it is likely buried beyond recovery. Accordingly, even the perennially thorough and practical kin have been forced to accept that, after a certain point, their ancient histories blur into myth. The Leagues of Votan are named in honor of Votan itself, who is also known variously as a primal ancestor, the Gilded One or the Stone Mind, amongst others. In some kin myths, Votan was not one being but many, and is sometimes depicted as a group of gleaming golden figures or a wheel of graven stone faces. In other myths, Votan fashioned the first crucibles, then raised the kin up and sent them sailing into the dark void, before oceans of fire and flesh rose to swallow them. Some myths spoke of Votan as eldest and wisest of the first ancestors, themselves shadowy presences, ill-defined and shown in many different forms, both humanoid and otherwise, where they are depicted at all. With typical pragmatism, the kin accept that their myths are too contradictory, allegorical, and suspect to be cited as possessing a definite basis in fact. But none of this troubles them overly. Steeped as they are in tradition and dour realism, the kin feel less need than humans to don the armor of faith. They are not frightened by the inexplicable. Instead, they accept reality as they see it to be. If there are matters in their ancient past of which they have no understanding, then, unless those matters suddenly become relevant to their present, the kin set them aside. Of course, many Grimnir continue to interface with the ancestor cores in the hopes of asking the right questions to unlock portions of their ancient history. Most do this more out of curiosity and a desire for completeness, however, rather than being motivated by some existential need. For all this, there are certain articles of lost history that the kin deem indisputable fact. They call these the First Truths. It is a first truth that their earliest ancestors departed the homeworld, almost certainly pre-imperial terror. Millennia ago, aboard fleets of generation ships, it is a first truth that the kin were a cloned people from the beginning and that the Iron Kin have been with them since those earliest days. It is a first truth or so that the ancestors of the kin set out as miners, prospectors, and void dredgers, charged with exploiting the riches of the heavens. Kin myth blends into recorded history around the time their long march fleets were approaching the galactic core. Why they did not return to the heartlands of humanity is unclear. 
from the fact that so many kin fleets plunged into the galactic core within a period of only a few centuries, it might be inferred that a deliberate choice was made. It is during this period that the last references to the first ancestors can be found, often blurring with or transitioning into mentions of the ancestor cores. These are themselves also referred to collectively as the Votan, with the kin employing the two terms interchangeably. The first ancestors are cited here as agents of change and held responsible for the majority of the stable mutations, collectively known as clone schemes, that run through the kin gene pool. This pool appears to have been broad, deep and varied from the first, putting the lie to simplistic notions of a clone race all being literally identical. The Votan are thought to have hardened the kin both physically and spiritually. Some accounts claim that this was in response to a perceived threat, others that it was done to ready the kin for inhabiting their harsh new home in the galactic core. In practical terms, the introduction of the clone skeins gave the kin denser musculature, tougher bone structures, higher red and white cell counts, exceptional core strength and formidable physical resilience. More esoteric, but no less evident, are the changes worked on the kin's spirit, which cause their souls to shine far more dimly amongst the tides of the warp than those of humans. The kin evidence no uncontrollable psychic mutation, and only those with the appropriate psychoactive clone scheme can activate the so-called barrier tech that allows psychically active kin to interact with the Empyrean. It is rare indeed that kin fall victim to physical mutation, demonic possession, or the temptations of chaos. Hostile psychic abilities struggle to find purchase upon them. It has been suggested by some outside observers that this very hardening of spirit led the kin to become even more obstinate and conservative in character. If this is so, then it is just one side of a metaphysical feedback loop that has benefited their race greatly across the millennia. Beyond these benefits, there are many cloak schemes that impart useful physical abilities upon kin who possess them, from enhanced reaction times and vision that registers infrared or other energistic spectra, to limited resistance to extremes of temperature, gravity or strains of cosmic radiation. The list goes on. The cone schemes undeniably aid the kin and enduring the extreme environments of the galactic core. Many clone skins manifest physically, whether it be unusual colored eyes or skin, craggy subdermal layers, chemical body odors, or various other giveaways. To humanity, such physical abnormalities would surely be cause for prejudice and mistreatment. To the kin, they are rather badges of valuable ability either bequeathed by the ineffable ancestor cause or encouraged by the Kona's guilds during gestation. Obscure legend gives way entirely to historical record during the following centuries. A scattered kindred fleet settled new worlds, establishing trade routes and becoming the first leagues of Votan. End quote. And so, we see the genesis of the kin of the leagues of Votan. Odd for it is so dense, actually. This entry means so much if you have but the wit to see. Now the kin are clearly not squats at all, for the squats were slowly made more robust and short due to the heavy gravity on the core worlds they colonized. But this is not the case with the kin of the Votan, for they are genetically engineered. They are designed thus so they were never as tall as humans. They were never altered by the conditions they were exposed to, as they are all bespoke clones. They were always half-men, as some might put it. An odd statement, one might think, until I lead you into our second quote of the video. So let's get on the same page. Concerning the men of stone. To quote... The Men of Stone were a class of artificially created beings created during the Dark Age of Technology in roughly Millennium 21. 
According to ancient accounts, the men of stone were engineered by the men of gold for the purpose of deep space colonization. Though physically inferior to their creators, they are capable of building great artifices and construct the men of iron as their eyes and ears. As the stone men existed in a state of half-life, they were unaffected by the demons of the warp, something that made warp travel much easier for them. In time, mankind learned to place itself into the ships of the stone men, protecting them from the depredations of the warp. Over time, as mankind expanded into the stars, the men of gold lost their influence and the men of stone became ascendant. However, the men of iron eventually rebelled against their stone creators, producing catastrophic wars that humanity barely survived. End quote. And this was the tale of the men of gold, the men of stone, and the men of iron. An ancient tale. Hence, from my limited perspective, we have the answer to so many questions. So many comment strings, so many YouTuber videos, all surrounding this one tract from one book by the superb Andy Chambers. From my perspective, the question is answered. For the kin are not squats. The kin are the men of stone. They were always short, robust, and of limited soul brightness. They were designed to mimic humans, but not to ever be mistaken for them. And they are close to the iron kin, which are clearly early or prototype men of iron. But these ones stayed loyal. The genesis of the kin states that their fleets went into the core. Before, when they were squats, this made total sense. Now, the kin were clearly either avoiding a fight with the men of iron, which seems less likely, or had retreated from the rest of the human race when they started to destroy their technology in the purges after or during the cybernetic rebellion, so close in its pace to the Butlerian Jihad of Dune. But such were the times that pilfering plot ingredients was not as frowned on as it is now. In any case, the kin matched the description of the men of stone so perfectly, I cannot see this as an accident. Now every last person of law asks, but what do you think? And I never do. I do read most comments, but I tend to do my tap dance and then go to bed, quite often literally. But today, today, I do ask. Because this is such a new faction, such new law, let us discuss it amongst ourselves with vigor, but with respect. Please be nice, but do put down your thoughts in the comments. I read most on videos if I can, but on this one, I will be watching with avid interest. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Old hands, lend me your knowledge. New faces, let me feel your zeal. Hit me up with your perspectives, because I really want to know. As the week progresses, we shall see lots more of the Leagues of Votan. I hope you will join me on the ride. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. A swift reminder about our other channels, links in the description. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction and will be joining me over the week as we explore this rich and fascinating new faction. And thank you for your precious time. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.